when you operate in ingratitude you concentrate on the things that God has not done and take your eyes away from the things that he has done you might not be where you want to be but when you check you find that you are not where you used to be no matter how minute it might be what matters is that there is a change no matter how little it is and one of the good things about the kingdom the structure of the kingdom is if you thank God for his fingers then you will see his hand and the structure when you understand the legalities and technicalities of scripture God always starts like that he doesn't bring forth his hand first imagine he wants to bring the abundance of a rain and he sent the cloud look at the way the servant said it I saw a little hand like that of a human in the sky and Elijah said if you can see that then that's the miracle are we following? that's the secret of greatness most of the times when I pray for the sick I ask them how do you feel? I say I get better then that's it do we understand that? from that little little miracle he always brings the little clouds I remember days where God told me people will be sending gifts to you financially I will take care of you you won't be paid from ministry and the first gift I started receiving was 100 naira I thank God I thank God. now I can receive in hundreds of thousands to millions but I thank God then you know what he sends first was what? the little cloud I'm teaching you a great secret if God say he will do anything especially for those in the healing ministry if you pray for a cripple, don't expect the person most of the times to start running. There are times where we have extraordinary miracles. But most of the times, they can be doing like this. The miracle has started. As long as that is not what it was before. No matter how little the sign you saw is, ah, tell your church to scatter dance. Miracle has started. That's the secret. But our problem is that we wait to see something very spectacular, something very massive, something very sit down. Thank you. Very great. And then we'll see that as a reason to want to what? Thank you. I remember somebody came to me to say something one time and she said um, I asked her, I said she was down with health and then she went through a surgery I prayed and she went through a surgery and um, she came back and I asked her why haven't you given thanks to God and she said uh, what did he actually do inside the doctor and I laughed I laughed you know for everything no matter how much human contribution we have there are divine involvement. I, I, I heard the story, of, and one of my father said to us a story of a young man who went to the hospital with a wrong leg that is to be amputated. The doctors kept him for surgery. After the surgery, they found out that it was a good leg they cut. Month, about two months ago, we had a case in Lagos of a young man who had appendix, and while he was being um, 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 uh, operated upon, they found out that they cut a little of the small intestine. If you saw those stories. Last two months or three months, I heard a story of um, a woman in Delta who had a childbearing issue. And after they delivered her, later she started, you know, complaining, complaining, only for them to find out they left a large chunk of cotton wool in her stomach. In everything, God is involved. My to me a story, he said one time a man came to him for a problem and he told the man, um, how much is the surgery? You know the problem with the body of Christ. I take drugs. Is that okay? And I believe in miracle, the miraculous. I've seen crazy miracles. Crazy healings. The first healing, if you want to check, is my wife. My wife came to school where she was in the campus with... She, I think she has testified that in Christian. They used to put drugs in Leda for a different kind of health condition. But now she's more healthier than me. If I'm the sick one. Are we together? I've seen miracles. Are we following? I've seen outstanding and crazy miracles. Crazy miracles. Are we together? But you see, the problem with the Christian folk is that we have this um, uh, um, stereotype mindset of imbalance to the gospel. I asked the question one time to a young man, and I asked the same question here. When Jesus healed how many lepers? Ten lepers. Did he confirm their healing? He asked them to go show themselves to the priest. You are not a doctor. There are those who are apportioned to be that. That's their profession. That's their area of specialization. That's what they studied for years. Do we understand that? The same way a doctor cannot diagnose spiritual problems. He can't see your heart. I can see it. As you are sitting, I'm seeing it. But a doctor can't because that's my own area of what? Specialization. I can look at you like this and I'm seeing beyond what, you're, what is standing in front of me. So same way you must allow those in their respective field 
to carry out the operation. So the Bible says, he told them, go show yourself to the priest to confirm your healing and to pay the due that is necessary. Do we understand that? You see, sometimes, I remember one time, uh, some of my children, uh, I was a bit strong in health, so I called one of my daughter. I said, please, go to the chemist, get me some sort of drug and let me take um, having malaria. And she was shocked. I do those things very intentional to my children. The reason why I'm doing that is so that the next time she has malaria, she will not call me. The problem is that they don't learn. Because I wonder how we'll send you to go buy me malaria drugs. And when you have malaria, you are calling me. You didn't see what I did. It's intentional. So you have sense. Why should you stress me to pray a prayer of something of 500 naira? We should understand the difference between the supernatural and poverty. If God comes and tells me, oh, there is a young man who has a tumor, right? That's why the church must pray for wealth. And son, if you fast 30 days and pray 30 days, this tumor will dissolve. And I asked him, but I asked God, what if the doctor undo this matter? Say, yes, they can take care of it. Then I asked him, young man, how much will it cost you for you to do this surgery? He said, $10. Then 30 days, am I stupid? I should just give you, it's not an impactation of $10. And take care of it. Do you understand that? Are we following? Please. Circumcision in scripture is what we call current day surgery. That's it. Why when you give back to a male child at the eight days, you don't tell the child, Bako pala suzae. Be circumcised in the name of Jesus. You find malam with razor blade. I'm teaching you where the church is. And many people have died. There are pastors who have killed pregnant women and say, I'm praying. No, they must not do this. Yes, I'm praying. Then the woman die, the baby die. Please, when we have exacted faith and the supernatural and we are not getting results, then we give those who are friend, who have been gifted by God, who have studied that environment to carry out their work. Do we understand that? Please. You see, so when my, my father prayed for that young man and said, go for the surgery. Why they went there? Because they couldn't see any problem with it, any issue with him. So they just wanted to operate him. As they finished the prayer, the young man just said, oh, there's this friend of mine that's a doctor. Let me go check him. While he approached that um, um, doctor friend of his, the doctor just said, he explained all his problems. And the doctor said, I feel your problem is thyroid something, something, something. And gave him a drug. The next day, the young man is fine. What that, has the prayer done? It has opened the eyes of men to now see what the problem is. Yes, that's also a way of the supernatural. Because sometimes some of these spiritual problems can come where the eyes of the doctor... Have you not heard? There's one I'm currently dealing with right now. Somebody sent me in Abuja. No, Abuja people, that's how their problem is. Big, big city, big, big problems. The guy has spent... The last information I had is that he has spent $60,000. That's $60 million from UK. No problem. When he goes to, the, to abroad, then they tell him you are fine. When he comes to Nigeria, he's a very wealthy man. When he comes to Nigeria, then he has, to, uh, what do you call it, two more in the brain. Almost to a point of power. He was begging one of my sons. He said, even if I need to go to see me, I said, tell him I'm here. You shouldn't worry. Because I don't like people to actually see me. Because they've come with Ghana must go. I don't like it. Allow me to pray. Then what God does for you. If you feel like blessing me, bless me. But if you feel like not blessing me, I don't give you a damn. He will still send the raving best to give me food. Do you understand that? So I don't live by people. Are we together, please? And so, you see, they couldn't see what the problem is. But if he comes to Nigeria, they will say, you are not fine. So it shows that there's something beyond the natural. Do we understand that? Please feel very free to approach doctors. When you wanted to learn engineering, you didn't sit in your house. Because we are, what I'm saying this is to bring your attention to the fact that we are abusing certain things in the kingdom. I'm putting it aside. There are points where you can exercise your feet. Is that okay? And there are points where you just help yourself and use that timing of stressing to have a deck consistently for one month to press into God. Do you understand that? Press into God. I remember one young man then, whether he's in this church, I don't even know. It's a parable. You know how Jesus used to say, there's a certain man. <laughs> And so every time he wants to go on a retreat, he will break down in health. Then he will stay inside that retreat and say, the retreat is doing more healing. That's the next time you look like carrying him, oh God, treat yourself and continue. 
are we together because the devil always fights you from your position of what ignorance once he finds out you defeat that you even find out the hell to become balanced you won't you won't once he knows this is how we hold this person anytime she wants to press deeply into god he brings that same situation then he knows he has owed your mind you will not treat yourself so you drag there again and remain in that spot for life do we understand that so please medical science is not wrong god gave these people that intelligence is that okay when you have um, a medical related um, issue please you have rights to visit the doctor most of the times it is cases that are beyond doctors intervention there are doctors who recommend people to church and say this is your case is not dr rock go to check a pastor this is spiritual and that's how it's supposed to be the under, i remember one time while we were in the campus my children would just rush to the because you know hostel people are very they, they have a realm of how they cook yes hostel people, there's a way they mix food they are gifted so things happen to them once in a while you understand they understand what i'm saying that's why they are smiling so any small thing they will come to my office Prr, papa i'm purging i said ah. is it because my office is closed i should pray for purging again by flagina is this spiritual problem flagina of uh, how much 200 naira there after today so now i'll come so i don't understand what is happening to me i've been purging it's now you chop now so i went and buy flagina one carton i kept this in my locker in the office so anyone that else can I say grab your coffee? <laughs> this, this prayer you are looking for, I can use it for something else. <laughs> they are more serious issue. Are we following? So tell anybody grab your coffee now. <laughs> please help me with my catchy. Are we together? So please, there's nothing wrong if we we try to do our trip. That is that okay? You no, know, I told while I was having this discussion with someone i said to her i said why christians are very funny is if you want to give birth do you come to your <laughs> where do you go to <laughs> but when that same child is not feeling fine you are calling me off <laughs> why are we behaving like something is wrong i know see the worst thing that can happen every captivity you are in is by an information you have gotten and every freedom you will enjoy is by information you will get so there are information that sponsors bondage and there are information that sponsors freedom do we understand that every way you are held captive is that there is an information you have received do we understand you know i was in this shoot in this category of struggling years of my work with god till i almost lost my life in it in fact i was almost in the point of you know in the hospital i, I started seeing cloud with white white people I even saw where they printed obituary. I like the design. So it was bluish cloud. You know, they now write call to glory. So I was asking myself in that, in that vision that ah, ah, these realms and dimensions in God. Are we entering somewhere else? Or we are here. So it was with by force I came out of that vision. I knew that was my life was going. Do we understand that? And I had to advise myself. And what was the scripture God gave me in that vision? no one is crowned except he runs lawfully no one is crowned except he runs lawfully he says so let me teach you how men has made shipwreck of their feet number one if you take too much of sugar you will have diabetes we have anointed men of god who is still healed elijah died of a sickness yet his bone was healing a dead person was raising a dead man from life do we understand that if you stay in an atmosphere where there are so much of mosquito you will have malaria it's not an attack it's normal because this is the balance of the ecosystem the way you are chopping chicken that's how those things need food too tell your neighbor it is ecosystem balance you know they chop chicken you know they chop fish Do we understand? You can just kill at will. Now you're applying for Christmas. That's why you want to go home now. You want to kill at will. But something now that needs to be alive. Because mosquito was not created to feed on grass. And it's God that made it. It will feed on people. So what you should be praying for is to not, instead of you disturbing yourself, take drugs when you're not fine. Pray to get out of a poverty level. Because there's a level you get out from. Not because you're anointed, but your atmosphere cannot tolerate it. 
there are big men who are who are big they are not they are not even christians but they can't have malaria because of the kind of environment they live in so when you hear men of god say i've not been sick for 30 years check the atmosphere they also run what lawfully they are not in your kind of condition you are in the midst of a forest thank god for the light situation if not every category of a forest and it is that you have it dry land grasses no light no water eat just few things that makes it not too much a desert do we understand that so how do you want to compete with such kind of reality so the first thing you should do is to strive lawfully then your faith can be crowned but you then instead of fighting not to take drugs fight to get out of poverty there is a kind of way you eat so well your immune system will be strong enough to resist this are we together strong enough the cost of my cream is about i think 2000 naira 2000 is it 2000 2000 because she's a recommender my daughter is very good that's our area of calling 2000 but i take one of my supplements is over 40 something thousand don't try to don't <laughs> don't try it <laughs> if not you use your handout money are we together because the truth about it, all those things you do external are not it. It's from inside out. The day my daughter came when she when she came around to the house and she started staying with me, she, I, when I opened her eye to see it, she stopped all those screen things. It's not it. You will waste money. Are we following? It's from inside. You just see a man is fresh and he's fasting. It's inside. But now money, good life, now money, beauty cream, now money, no be lotion, no be now money. Are we together? So get yourself from that uncomfortable life. Then there are certain things you will have naturally what defeated. It's not everything the unbelievers pray for. Are we together? That's where we are missing it. Do you know if you fumigate this environment, right? If you do standard fumigation, maybe it lasts for one month. You will not look. If I open all the all the glasses here and stay here, you will not see one mosquito right you know get money not be your problem no argument do you understand that please that's why instead of me teaching people to manage their life i tell them to grow their income because your life is already managed i don't know what to tell you to manage again how like tell somebody eating gary to manage his life what does he want to manage there again you are managed now what you need is to grow your income <laughs> that's it <laughs> are we together so tell your neighbor taking drugs is not a sin. This wisdom for science, for medicine, is given by God. It's not from the kingdom of darkness. Is that okay? Have you no head cases where the doctor will say, we tried our best? So for everything you see, whether you go to hospital or not, there is divine involvement. There's divine involvement. Even some have, have dealt case, with cases of people who were on drugs and the drug they say is not working on the body again. And we pray and suddenly the person is fine. And we don't tell them to stop taking their drugs because that's abuse of, of, the, of the healing ministry. We are not a doctor. Allow people who does their profession to undo that. Are we following? Please, pray for God to bless you financially. 90% of your problem will be solved. The major ninety percent of the reason why Christians do what they do is because of poverty, and that's the simple truth. There are things that are not pray, you don't pray for them. Are we following? You don't pray for them. Once you have the means, you take care of it. There are things you don't pray for. You have the means to feed. You are pray. There are things that are not miracles because you have the finance for it. If you have the money to buy a laptop, will you be praying? Oh God, send help us. Send help us. Laptop. Laptop. Are we together? It's poverty. Tell anybody neighbor it's poverty. May God take you out of every form of financial lack. In the name of Jesus. Please give me a note of when I'm supposed to end this sermon. May God take you out of financial lack. In the name of Jesus. So I said, um, be, ex be open. Is that okay? Have a legal case. Don't go pray alone. 
look for the best lawyer are we together don't pray alone look for the best lawyer it's in scripture get the best lawyer that can defend your case please Christians prayer is the key it's not all the keys are we following prayer is what a key not all the keys so please know how you will employ servants and like I tell people prayer is the key but you use your hand and open the door because the key will not open the door by itself that hand you are using to open the door is the step you need to take you bring lawyer the prayer work on the lawyer you bring if he's elderly you get, get the best of doctor all right and then you solve most of your problem I told you I'm switching from the book of experience 33 and verse 2 I've been there the last one of the Easter conference we have Maranatha I preached bleeding because of another year or two do you understand? I was holding my stomach, but the people didn't know. I was bleeding. But I had to leave the, the, the theater after three days to rush just to take that conference so that nobody knows I, I, I'm not around. I told you I don't like sorry. Because I refuse to be an object of sympathy and pity for my generation. There's a life to live. One life alone. And we choose to live Christ. Do we understand that? So please feel free. And from them I advise myself. Then I remember my, I'll go home. My dad, my dad is in is the gospel. He will look at me and laugh. Say, Stanley, are you know it? I said, no. How many days? 90. He will laugh. <laughs> he said, this two that they do. We don't do them. <laughs> but the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. <laughs> Till one, in the middle of the night, something was happening inside me. You know what they call labor pain? That's why I respect women. My own was more than labor pain. I said, God, ah. I will pray. Pray, pray. I drank bottles of oil. Drank, drank. I had types of mantle from starting father. I put it on my head like this. Nothing, no, the pain was there. So when I ran to the hospital, my doctor said, Ah, this is the problem. You have abused your health. <laughs> because then I'll fast as I'm finishing 90. After one week, bah, 40. Those that were with merely days. At least this young man lived with me for three to four years. From 90, pa 40, this, and they will see power out. And I was the one suffering they were enjoying. Because I will fast, they will chop to church, they will break chairs. After the service, I'll still be thinking of how to replace chairs. That's why I say I don't f- do all those people are falling down again. Just sit down well. You break any chair, you pay. Straight up. I know you are you are in grace for man three, four, five years. You know, if you want to scatter this place now, three minutes now, I can say stand up. <laughs> you see people entering two chairs like this. We've seen crazy things here. Crazy things. But at the point, I say, please, everybody respect yourself. Because I'm dying, you are enjoying. Sometimes I'll come back from science, I can't eat because of the stress. And they have gone to eat after the service. <laughs> are we together? So I remember my dad would tell me then. He says, see, I'm not saying you're not fast. But when you are done, you long period of time to recover. That is, you ensure that your, the body has recovered what it lost. Then you can say you are doing. I know, yeah, because of zeal. And I've told you, zeal is not equal, equivalent to spiritual power. Are we following? It doesn't give people ac- things according to their zeal, but according to their several abilities. Till I almost lost my life, and I had sense. Then, if you see me, you won't attend here. You know all those pastors that will look like when you just see them? They, you know this rat that used to chop people's leg and blow breeze? That's how my face was. How many of you have seen those pictures online? Right? I lost all my delicate balance. It was no longer I that lives. But Christ was living through me. Sometimes I'll see my... If I when my children were trying to do some things on the social media page and they picked one of my... I said, please, this is my past tense, not past. <laughs> Don't bring this kind of picture out. <laughs> I couldn't believe myself. Do we understand that? So the Holy Ghost started teaching me certain things. And I found out that to an extent, your acceptability and your presentability is even tied to your physicality. There's a way people come to a place and they look at who is talking. Even if you don't look fat, let your skin tell it. I don't look too fat, I don't eat much. But when you look at the skin, you know, uh-uh, this one, it can't, it's not the suffer. Do we understand that? 
there is a way that you accept that it's tied to your what? Your physicality. People see you because before they hear what you have to say. These are the little things God teach me from experiences in ministry and from fathers that I'm spelling out to us today. People see you before they listen to what you have to say. And once they've re rejected you in their heart, whatever you are saying is useless to them. So you must be conscious as a Christian on your physicality. I've told us, you know, I taught those in the school of the prophets on um, the power of the flesh. Because when we say crucify the flesh, crucify the flesh, many people assume that they say you should kill this body. No, it's the nature that this body sponsors, not this body. How did I know? You see, this flesh, without it, you can do nothing for God. How do I know? Luke 22. The Bible says he came in the midst of when he wants to bet destiny. He needed three men, Peter, James, and John, to pray for him. And while he went a while to pray, he comes back and finds them what? Sleeping. I thought that message, you can download that. Uh, willing spirit, weak body. And he said to them that the spirit is willing. That means the, their zeal is intact. Their knowledge base is intact. Their anointing is powerful. But the problem is that the flesh can carry them. What is simply mean? Say, if they tell them, say, the entire that day there is no magic they will do there are people if you ah, i've seen people like that too you tell them if you this prayer you must mm. in the midst of your talk they are sleeping there is nothing you have to you the body can carry them are we following so the body and the bible tells us in joel 2 28 he said in the latter days i will pour out my spirit on all spirits what carries it you need the flesh to carry the anointing these are not teachings for your level anyway, but let me just help you. Because some of you, where you are going to, we don't know yet. So we want to bring you back on where you need to be impactful. Are we following? Is that okay? Because we are young men. They are zeal for God. When they are pushing God, the thing they carry them go somewhere. Do we understand that? I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. When you are renting a house, and at a certain point in time, you are not comfortable with the house. The water system is not working properly, right? The um, uh, maybe the lightning system is having issue. What do you? What is your next resort? You want to change? That's how the Holy Ghost is changing people, because the system, the flesh, is not working. Are we together? It's not working. So you need your flesh ready to be what perfectly intact. That's why the Bible says that your body is the temple of God. It houses the spirit. Take care of it. That's the Holy Ghost rental service. Make sure it is intact. As it will change house, you start looking for new lodge. Do you understand that? Take care of yourself. None of you at least to an extent could say you do retreat more than I do. Or you say you pray more than I pray. Or do whatever your schedule like is right now. And I'm still taking care of myself. So you have no excuse. I eat well and I eat good food. Are we together? In fact, I, I fast according to my finance. If I know that if I long, Nagari awaits me at the ending, then I, I reduce the days. If I know that it is heat season, you know that type of heat season, that you not see a mad person in Mina. Even if you see, you just lay on that tree like this, quiet. They are healed. If it's that kind of season in Mina, I won't do a fast or stretch. I will be taking liquid because naturally even without fasting I've drank one um, um, what do you call it bag of pyota that day then let alone that one is the fasting do you understand that please this is where people damage their health we have a young man that they called us then was it last year I shared that story he has a kidney problem and we had to pay 18 million as friends to contribute because I'll say I'll say now ah, <laughs> papa has lost it is not in his canality. I'm still alive, bro, and I'm fine. 18 million for kidney problem. His health is terribly challenged now. Battling even the prayer now, he can't pray it. That God is pursuing now is the God that is looking for him now. Do we understand these things? Please don't abuse. Tell your neighbor, don't abuse your health. What even carried me to this place now? Hmm? Thanksgiving. Okay, what we are saying is that even if you take drugs, thank him. Is that okay? Thank him. Because that the drug worked, God was still involved. 
that the doctor even knew what your problem was, God was still involved. Else, evil people can cover the thing. Doctors will not know the, what is wrong with you. So thank him. That's what we are saying. Sure. All right. Let me just go through my message. I don't have time. So let me go through my message and just um, wrap up the service. Asian words ever true. Changing me and changing. That's why I like the word of God. We have come with open hearts. <laughs> Let me, uh, in my book, um, Sentence to a Life of Prayer, part one, I think part one there about when I was talking about the place of fasting to prayers, I tried to talk on the different kinds of fastings. That's why I hear my children say, I do 40 days, I do 50 days. I don't say they know they take something, you know. You understand? Some might be that Daniel type. The chop price will you not know, get you. You're, yeah, is that do you, is it not in the Bible? Uh-huh. You chop wara, we no get ingredients. <laughs> the word of God is good and powerful. It comes to help us. Every aspect where you are stressed, there is a knowledge gap there. You see. I shared a story of Jesus and I tried to prove from scriptures that Jesus' fasting was not what we call dry. The normal way, well, there's nothing called dry fasting. It is actually called water fast. It is people from, I don't know, a folk of the Christian faith that brought it and said dry fasting, that you not take water. Number one, it is scripturally wrong. Number two, it is what medically wrong. Now, you can only get to that dimensions of fasting when you are in the glory because in the glory all your balance substances suspended so Moses was in the glory where there is no naturality again right in God's presence and then he could be there for 40 days and 40 nights no food no water because his physical systems were suspended nothing was working he could be there I've been there I've been there, I've done crazy things like that. On certain specific instructions, and then the sustenance is there. The strength is there. That's why I see no reason why you should be faster and you are lying down. If I'm faster, you this is how you still see me, you will not know. I guess you just say I'm maybe my delicate balance is going down. But you can't see me lying down, or I can't move again. Uh, so what's happening, Papa? He's fast, he's in a retreat. <laughs> why? Do we understand that? So that's what they call dry fasting. That one, it is what? One, directed by God. And two, sponsored by him. I had one of my sons like that. He fasted for 70 days, no food, no water. In the glory. His systems were suspended. He couldn't even feel hungry. Because biologically, if you go without water for nine days, he could... Do we understand these things, please? You are getting so close to your death. Two, the benefit of this kind of, why we say it is called water fast, is that as you are fasting, you are supposed to be washing your internal system. The water cleanses your stomach. As you are doing more harm to yourself. Because those food that are stayed there for days, hanging on the linings of your stomach, they are now going to be acted upon, right? And then you are not washing to take it. That's why you see your mouth will be very bitter. Because we call this your upper rumen. While your stomach is your lower rumen. So the state of your, or your tongue during the fast tells you how your internal system is. How do we know you are perfectly cured? You now get to a point from like day 7. Where you now find out that your mouth is now becoming clean. It's not like dirty as it is. Do we understand what I'm teaching? You get that in my book please. So it is called water fast. Let's look at the story of Jesus, Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4. The Bible says, and after his fasting, listen, number one is that where he fasted was close to the river Jordan. The first possibility there was that he was taking water. Two, when someone is coming out of a fast, he should be hungry, not thirsty. Do you understand? No, sorry, he should be thirsty, not what? Hungry. But he was tempted with what? Food, not water. Because you can't break a fast with food. You've not eaten for 40 days. The first thing you take is what? Water. That's the only thing you are looking for. You can't even eat because the strength is not there. But what was he tempted with? Food. How will you chop bread after 40 days and 40 nights? 
he was taking water that's why he said he was th um, hungry not thirsty do we understand these things please some of the things you must even consider your environment somebody fasting in Canada and can go 90 days don't try it in Mina this is Amatan look at the way I'm sweating you use common sense wisdom is profitable to direct one of my son one time said he wanted to do three days stretch and I told him I said take what I said no 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 the background is coming from they are they fast and they don't take what I say is alright and that period the kind of heat that was in this state day one in the midnight somebody was tapping me it was in my dream I was responding so what's the problem I said I'm not seeing I say you are not seeing what? I say I'm not seeing. I'm just seeing like the stars, the moon, cloud. I say that they carry you go where you don't know. You better come back. Are we together? Why? Your environment is different from somewhere else. So if somebody says I did 70 days in so so location, don't compare it with your own location. Do we understand that? This is the abuse of wisdom. Sometimes you can do a liquid fast where you take liquids because of your environment. Don't kill yourself. Are we following? It doesn't mean if you do the one you don't take it at all, God will be more impressed. You should know the spiritual relevance of what you are doing, not necessarily looking for how difficult it should be to impress God. Moreover, if you are not trying to fight maybe um, an addiction, you are not trying to fight the flesh, why should you be doing dry? Are we following? Why? Why should I be doing 70 days, no food, no water at now? No, I did it then, not now again. Do we understand these things? Please. I won't be able to go into details of that, but you can get that in my book. Is that okay? We are trying to specify on these things so that it will help us. Alright? So let's just um, get into the sermon today. But have you learned anything? Are you sure you've learned? So you can do... In fact, you can even do what we call evening fasting. Let me explain why I said evening fasting is good. In your environment. Because I did that for the prayer unit. Why you are fasting? It is prayer and fasting, not fasting and prayers. What did I say it is? So it is fasting you are adding to prayer. It's not as if you are adding prayers to fasting. Please, did you understand that? Because it didn't say my house shall be called a house of fasting. No, what is house is to be called is what? A house of prayer is when you know understand your prayer they go you they try like this the body is the spirit is willing the flesh is then you join something to aid you those are fast, uh, prayer boosters do we understand what i'm saying so if you are not saying you are in a fasting period and you know they pray you are in hunger strike so that's why most of the times you check your schedule know the purpose of that fast and then know the kind of fast that applies for instance now if i am a workaholic during the day my night and my time time of working actually is, is night because the bible says why shepherd watch their flocks at night so my night my time of working is actually night and the bible says in genesis and the evening and the morning was the first day not the morning and evening so the working hour starts from what and the evening then to the morning do you understand that are we together? I didn't say she should not now go to class. <laughs> we, we got, the body of Christ, we need to be asked. What I'm saying now is a personal application. Please go to class. Your work hours cannot be night. You are, you are here now and they gave you timetable. <laughs> so follow what they gave you. Is that okay? So, but that's not my emphasis. My emphasis is if I am busy all through the day, I'm attending to prayer. That's why I work more at night. Because during the day, I am. I'm, um, trying to beat a target, beat something, expecting I want to meet with someone. So even in my time of prayer, I'm distracted because I need to rush. By three, I have an appointment. But in the night, I'm not going anywhere. So I'm focused. That's why Psalm 19 verse 2. Say day after day, utter speech and night, give it what? Knowledge. Do we understand these things? So I will go for what we call an evening fast. That was the type Jesus was doing. Daytime, he go chop. Then towards the evening, the Bible says he will now go to Mount Olive and lick them. He won't chop the next morning please do we understand that I don't know God wants to liberate somebody come maybe you are going somewhere you are not expecting you now so he needs to set you free on time do we understand that so what did I say again you will do what we call an evening fast why am I fasting that time that's when I need my body to be light because I say I want to pray at night but you, now you have that you are busy through the day you need to pray at night then you fast through the whole day the evening sees you chop amala pandedian they say holy ghost wake me 
And when you want to pray, night, you now stand up. Let's even assume the Holy Ghost tried. I told you your problem is the kind of song you even start with on top bed. It's of you to start with heavyweight tongues that will charge your spirit. You are not a man. He's truly not a man. <laughs> but you, you are a man. <laughs> are we together? Now, so you follow off the next morning. Do we understand these things? So I'm talking to young people, so I just want to help you. All right? So you do what we call what? An evening fast. Because that's when you need to be light. You don't want to be heavy, so you can actually have the time to what? To pray. Is that okay? Please. Some other time. Fast is not our topic. Four recipe or recipe for breakthrough. Four recipe for breakthrough. Don't worry, it's still Thanksgiving. I'll end at that. Four recipe for breakthrough. I have a time in front of me, so let me work with it. Hezebube, see of how you brought. Hezebube. I know is your grace all my days. I will sing your praise for the last time. Ezebube, see how far you brought me. Ezebube, I'm so glad you found me worthy. For recipe for breakthrough, number one, stay with your gift and assignment. Proverbs 16, I think, and verse 18. The Bible says that the gift of a man make it room for him and bring him for great men. The four recipe of breakthrough for breakthrough. Stay with your gift or what? Assignment. You are stronger in your own God given environment. Do you understand that? That's why we have to use this. A, 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 a pastor should not be giving people medical recommendations except when it is spiritually inspired you have no right to tell people not to do the surgery except it is spiritually what inspired or you have gotten a solution as an alternative to that do we understand that we must be careful stay within your god the moment that um, judah and um, john the baptist began to interfere in political matters he had his head cut off because your safety and your the Bible says take the child to Egypt for there are many that seek his life so the security of that child is in the obedience of that instruction you are only safe where God keeps you you are only stronger where he keeps you your consignment is in your assignment your location only comes to your location do we understand that stay in your areas of gifting and assignment stay in your God giving strengths don't try to venture into other areas God has not called you into. You can't experience a breakthrough. The mic is a bit low for me, please. Thank you. You can't experience a breakthrough like that. Do we understand? Quiet, thank you. Thank you. Are we following, please? Stay there. If your own is the area of um, cooking, you are very gifted in cooking. Once you cook, people used to comment on it. Stay there. Don't try to venture into something else. Are we following? And say now, I want to attempt to sing. If your own is prayer, pray! When you come here, don't take song. Nothing is poor church. See how can you brought. What thing they do you? Nobody says to start prayer is with song. Some of you have that flow. The atmosphere will be there. Stay there. That's why you see, I can't do like that. My own is this one now. See how far you brought. Even if I get kata, I go stay single. It's my strength. Are we following? You, how many of you have seen me pray? Then I carry this iron, climb bomb. Ah! Ah! I know fit. 
I went to preach for my boy in the Gume. So his prayer mountain, I went to. How many of you saw that video online? I went to anoint his prayer mountain. I said it to the members. This young man stayed here 90 days inside this forest. <laughs> I said, You tried. I'm your father, but I know fit. It's your calling because it's an evangelistic call. You are called to forest and bushes. We work with buildings, <laughs> stadiums, <laughs> open air crusade. That's my. And I will stay there. If I feel go forest now, is that I encounter something or something encounters me? I won't say because I'm your spiritual father. If my son can, then I can't. No, my can can't. Stay there. That's your strength. That's your strength. Even when you are in ministry, there are heights you already know you are not called to attend to that matter. So leave it. The first time you attended prophecy, now you are lying. Line. See the way some of you were anticipating somebody to win your yesterday election. You the way they pushed me. Imagine I come here and say, This is the man, this is the man. Church now for half. For that one, why I manage miss. That's humans for you. Humans will not compromise when it comes to value. This generation, they don't care. You miss it one, they don't forgive you. Be careful. Are we together? Be careful. If your aspect is in that aspect of God gives you the prayer or the, don't try to venture to breaking light. You will confuse the generation. Now you are talking, people are confused. What is he saying? Because you are thinking because somebody is doing it and they appreciate that person. Then when you come, you must do that same thing. Stay on your own, they will appreciate it too. Do we understand? I've always said it. There are musicians who are popular than pastors. If I write now, they're even more higher speed. If I go preach now, they run. They so bless me, they give me a million. But yeah, musician, I say before I come, my manager will uh, uh, send five million to the account. I sing three minutes with my tape. Me, I will open blind eyes, deaf ears, dumb. All of us should do this music now. What a gift of him. Make it room for him. Why am I saying this? In the midst of your pain, stay with your gift. That was the secret of Joseph. Right in the midst of his pain, he never abused and said, I'm not doing it again. After all, the world don't appreciate me. I'll just stay one corner. Let them go to hell. No! When you stop to do what is right for you to do, it affects you more than anyone else. That's a, I'm not coming to church because of what that sister said. Does it affect the sister? You know, but see, I don't share a way in Don't you understand what I'm saying? Just interpret whatever way it comes to you. Do we understand that? You are doing yourself. And thinking there's one weapon somewhere fighting you. As he kept exploiting his gifts, even in the in the prison, he spoke to the butler. He spoke to the um, baker. What I tell you is a mystery of the communion. The bread, bread broken and the butler be restored, right? And as he was doing that, the virtues of his gifting was rubbing on them. Suddenly, when the butler was restored and appeared before Pharaoh, as he goes to serve him the wine every day. That gifting and deposit of Joseph on the bottle begin to cause Pharaoh to dream for Joseph to be needed. That little thing you are doing that nobody appreciates it today. Oh, it's just me now. Nobody know this help I'm rendering. I can impact just a few of you sitting here now. And tomorrow you have a global ministry in Brazil. You have a global ministry in Mexico. It's still me. Do we understand that? That's how a man thinks. I'm not saying to like have when it's 5,000 card, then I'll preach sound. I'll preach well keep investing in your gift it will definitely make room for you number two maintain a consistent life of prayer james 5 and verse 13 maintain a consistent the bible says and my house shall be called a house of what prayer james 5 13 he said is there any among you mary let him sing is there any among you in pain let him pray so the scriptural prescription for pain is prayer. The way we have an anti-malaria drug for malaria, the scriptural prescription for pain is prayer. So when you pray, you will experience breakthrough. You come out of unpleasant situations. That's what the scripture is saying. Are we following please? Pray! Why we stay so long in the midst of problems and situations is because men don't pray. We are looking for who to share our situations to. When you pray, you get divine inspiration. You get divine strategies. You know what to do. You are sensitive. In the midst of your pain, they are still duping you. 
Are we together? Pray. See, I told somebody, I said, pray to a point you become exper experienced and so sensitive to detect the minute lie. One of my father said to me, he said, pray to a point where people respect your prayer life. How would your husband see that you pray morning to night? You go to different prayer house and he's still confident to cheat against you knowing you will not see it. That's why people don't respect what we do. The end product, I told you, your prayer is not as important as your sensitivity in the place of prayer. Because sometimes the name Jesus will not raise the crippled chair. The name Jesus will not open the blind eyes. The name Jesus will give the blind man an instruction to go wash himself. When I teach on how to play with the miraculous next day, I'll teach us on that. Sometimes the name Jesus doesn't do the miracle. It gives what? Instruction. The name tells you what to do. Say, go wash yourself in Siloam. Pray! Because for every situation you find yourself is therein, there is an instruction that you, you will get you out of it. So as you stay with God praying, you will not be, you know, in the midst of pain, you are open to various kind of voices. The voice of the devil or friends that are beating you and giving you wrong counsel. Like John, I'm um, like, what's his name, Peter? Why will you go and die? And he says, Satan, get behind me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pray! Pray. Make prayer a lifestyle. My house shall be called a house of prayer. So how do a man become a house of God? By cultivating a lifestyle of prayer. He becomes a container that is conducive for God to dwell. Why? Because God does not dwell in any kind of atmosphere. But the only one conducive for his presence. My house shall be called a house of prayer. That's why I pray. Not most of the time because I have a need or anything. But I pray. When you pray, you mobilize angels. You will experience breakthrough and ease in your life. You see things happening for you that you think you didn't even pray for. Do we understand that? Number three. Engage your imagination. Engage your imagination. Your imagination is the greatest nation in the world. Everything Jesus ever spoke in scripture came to pass. Everything God ever spoke in scriptures came to pass. True of us. But how comes you speak some things and they never happen? Should I show you the secret? Do you want to learn something? Give me a clip and verse 9. Just stay on that. Engage your imagination. Genesis 11 and verse 6. The Bible says and Jesus said that there is nothing these people have imagined in their hearts to do. There is nothing they have imagined in their hearts to do that they will not be able to what? Accomplish. Engage your imagination. Your imagination, I said, is the greatest nation and the largest nation in the world. Through your imagination, you can travel to places bigger than the whole world. Through your imagination. I want to show you why you speak things. Say, my week is blessed. My week is prosperous. My week is this. And it never comes to pass. I want to show you the secret today. Do you want to learn? Uh, because you have to have an appetite for knowledge before it can sit on you. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 gives us the secret. The Bible says, the thing that had been, it is that shall be, which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. Don't, don't worry, you understand. And there is no new thing under the sun. You are confused, right? We'll take it. It's not my fault. Solomon said it. My job was to read. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Hold this thing. There is nothing new under the sun. That's the problem and that's the reason why you will keep speaking and nothing will ever come to pass. How many of you have had a dream where you were being pursued in the dream and you woke up sweating? So it shows that what was happening in that soulish realm had a way of making your body believe that you were running physically. 
that to the extent you were sweating. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shadi Hokai Bahata. Thank you. Listen. It simply means that if the scripture says there is nothing new under the sun, anything you will see here must first, by obeying the legality of scripture, exist in a different realm. It must first have existed somewhere because there is nothing new under the sun. So what happens before you see God say a thing? He has first what created it in his imagination. Then it obeys the law. There is nothing new under the sun. He has made it first existed in his mind. Then he says it to the earth. Your problem there is that you are thinking otherwise and saying otherwise. I give you that example again. You have been pursued in the dream. And you woke up on observing that you are extremely sweating. How many of you have had some emotional play in the dream and you woke up with tears crying? So the imagination taking place there was influencing what was happening to you. So by the time I think I can't fail, it will affect my body not to recognize failure. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is nothing new under the sun. For it to obey the laws of scripture, it must first exist in another realm. You can't be praying and in your mind, you are thinking you will not pass that curse. You can't be praying in your mind and you are already thinking that it will take you 50 to you before you can get married. There is a clash of realms. There is nothing new under the sun. It must exist in another realm. If it comes to be existing the first time on it will never happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what Solomon is saying. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. If it had not been, speak from now till tomorrow. <laughs> it won't make sense. I was there before. I agree in that background to just be saying it, be confessing it. It won't make sense. Because when absolute truth is not brought to the body of Christ and they engage on certain scriptural truth, and if they don't see results, it gets into a point of what? Weariness. You become tired. Because that um, desire that has not come to can make the heart sick. And that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. Engage your imagination. Go into your exam seeing it that all my courses are A's. Begin to think, just imagine that the lecturer is marking me and he's smiling over my course. Imagine it that I saw my results. And I was happy seeing what I saw. So, it will have a way. Let me teach you something. There's something called in science placebo. You can browse about that later. How many of you know that? You've heard that before. What the placebo does is, is a trick by doctors. I learned it too. When a man has pain, there are people like that and they are in serious excruciating pain and the doctors cannot give them any drug and they keep insisting that the doctors give them a drug because they are dying they are in pain but the doctors know if they give them any drug at that point them is not re I'm ready for such then the doctors will pick a syringe and use that syringe to suck ordinary water and inject the person then the pain will stop then that injection will speak to the mind that you have been treated then the mind will ignore the pain your imagination is that injection I want you to give to your life I've told you mismanage pain mismanage poverty do your things in a way like you are already wealthy because even the way you are doing you naturally attract poverty say this thing is 50,000 ah no, this type of us can my prayer help you? Your mind is wrong. Your mind is wrong. The distinctions of life is our mindset. Look at the way I talk every day. I said I can never do any academic work and not have a first class. Oh, have I seen the next thing? If I want to do my page now, have I seen the course called 
I don't know nothing about it, but it's a mind registered enough that you are not, you just can't fail. Not because I've studied the course already. It's already seated there. And I keep saying it and saying it and saying it to a point is now me. There is nothing new under the sun. Finally, number four. I have other things to do, so I won't be able to stay much time on that. What are we teaching on again? The four recipe, or recipe, whatever, for greatness. Number four is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Give me Mark 6 32. I'll run through that and we are done this morning. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a component of two words. Every Thanksgiving must carry two components. One is thanks, and number two is giving. Because every encounter must be sealed by a sacrifice. Including if this deity in form of worship is Shango. Is that also? So that you don't think whether it's just going to lay Christianity. No matter what sort of a deity, every encounter with a deity, a being beyond human, is sealed with what? A sacrifice. And they departed into a desert place by she privately nest verse. You'll be very fast. This year will end. I'm done with my scriptures. And the people saw him, them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot, did out of all cities, and outwent them and came together unto him. I want to teach you how to enjoy breakthrough. After to the first three keys, right? You live in limitless breakthrough. Listen, listen. The Bible says that by the structures of the kingdom, right? The laws and the keys of this kingdom, before men are to get into the promised land, are we following, please? They are expected to send spies. Spies is a component of that people, a few people among the whole of Israel that must first go and test that place then can come and the rest of Israel into it the ordinations of scripture is that the whole of Israel is not permitted to go into it at once because you don't test a new water with your two legs please are we following follow me they must first send what spies to go see the land then they bring the whole people and say this land is good this is this this is this right now listen before you experience and enjoy anything as a human you must carry your imagination as your spine to go see it then when it has seen it it brings the whole body to it do you understand if you can grab what i'm teaching you will see the way things will change for you because you see where the problem is you are just speaking not knowing that it is existing for the first time you have not created it first before to obey the Lord that there is nothing new under the sun. It must exist first in your imaginative realm. See, the point your body will begin to agree with it as if it has happened. Do we understand these things? The Bible says, and um, did out of season next verse. Quickly, 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 quickly. And Jesus, when he came out, saw so. I was moved with compassion. What is compassion? A passion that compels you to action. Toward them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. He taught them, right? They saw Jesus, they liked him, they liked his teaching, his ministry, and they followed him. Then he began to what? Teach them. And when the day was now far spent, his disciple came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Next verse. Send them away that they may go into the country roundabout and into the village and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. The disciples advised, Master, sent them away. Next verse. And he answered and said unto them, Give you them something to eat. Why? He was trying to control and correct an apostolic doctrine that would have been existing today. That there are certain things you don't get from God. You have to go very far from his presence to get it. Yes, the church can give you spiritual things, but God cannot make you financially wealthy. You have to go away from church if it's what you are looking for. This is just for people that want to you know, build their spiritual life. Once it's prosperity, once it's sound health, you have to go away to go and look for it. To the cities and to the villages. He rebuked the apostles because if he has said nothing about it, a generation will come and pick this 
as a doctrine of scriptures that there are certain things that God's presence cannot give you. He was very, that's why every leader, your actions and your inactions must be conscious because you are setting a template for your generation and those ahead of you. He was conscious of that. And then he said, make them to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? The recipe for breakthrough. How to experience plenty in the midst of nothing. Next verse. And he said unto them, how many loaves are ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say five and two fishes. Listen. For every miracle God will want to give you, he must demand something from you. When Elijah wanted to attend, Elisha wanted to attend to the woman whose um, husband was the prophet, servant of the prophet, and then she was in debt. He said, what do you have in your house? Do you understand that? You are the one that looks outward as if you are empty. No matter how little what it is, is in with you. He will require that of you and ask you that same question. What can you do? What do you have? Your problem is that you count it as nothing because it looks small. But forgetting that it is from the small he multiplies anything that thing that looks like nothing to you is the very thing he will still start with as the basic substance for that breakthrough and that miracle are we getting blessed that thing that looks nothing to you is something to god next verse and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass listen two things i want to pick out of here he commanded them to sit so when men have decided that solution is in God they open themselves for his instructions when they conclude that there are things I must get out of his presence to go get then they seal themselves against his instruction but the moment they say God can do all things what is the way out then they open up themselves for what for instructions he commanded them to what sit only those that are seated in God's house are entitled for bread. Only those that have killed anxiety, not under a pressure, are entitled for bread. Now listen, and the Bible says they sat upon what? The green grass. Wait one minute. I thought the disciples just told us that that place was a desert place. That's the first miracle. The grass is appeared. So as you begin to follow the instructions he gave, in terms of nothing and little, the instructions will begin to produce the miracle that even you yourself might not yet be aware of. Suddenly we are hearing that they no longer sat on the bare sand. They are now sitting on what? He makes me lie down in green grass. Are we together? I'm teaching you the secret of how to experience breakthrough. Nothing puts me under a pressure. I only ask him, what is the way out? That is how I have come. That's why I say stand still. And know that I am God. I told you the word stand still there does not mean you should stand and be looking. Do we understand there? Are we following? It means you should look what? Inwards. Because I told you your problem, I don't have time to teach so many things. Your problem is that when you talk to God, you expect the clouds of the heavens to open and hear a lie, a lie. Lama sablatani. No. When you speak to the God of heaven, then you look to connect to him inside because he's in you. So he will talk from inside. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you don't give regards to that because you are looking for what something. Now sometimes he might not just say a word. Then he will begin to take actions. Say, Lord, Holy Ghost, show me this key. Sometimes he might not tell you the keys on the table, but you are speaking him. Then the God inside will say, okay, let me carry the key. Then he shows you. How does he show you? When you see, we pray for people with demonic issues, what do, I, do, they, do they do? They begin to move. What is moving them that way? The demon. Then suddenly you carry yourself. Say, I don't see key where they look for. And the God inside has moved. Please, are you learning? I want you to understand basic scripture and biblical truths. Do we capture that? So they saw the green grass. Next verse. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and he blessed them. So the secret there to increase is what? To give thanks and release the blessing. Lord, this is not all I wanted you to do, but I thank you. You have made that loaves of bread and fishes become multiplied. And teach you the mystery of thanks. 
he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set them before and two fishes divided he among them all thanksgiving is the recipe for increase and breakthrough every time you experience a little what do you do you lift it up to heaven and you do what you give thanks rise up to your feet my time is limited so i will not be able to do much I will learn anything this morning. Listen, <laughs> your imagination, your imagination is powerful than your prayers. I'm, I will not be able to take the prayer session now. When we are done with the Thanksgiving session, we are going to Thanksgiving now. Then we'll, after that, I'll come and round up the meeting. Your imagination, I'll pray for our exams. Your imagination is powerful than what? Your prayers. I will explain to you. Listen. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Listen, your keyboard a little bit down. In Ephesians 3 and verse 20, that God is able to do far above, exceedingly above what we what? We ask one and we what? Think. Hold up. Philippians 4 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lost, noble report, think on these things. You should what? Think. Follow me. I want to teach you how to produce results. That the problem you might be having is your imagination. You are creating things already because you see the first word they even exist is there. It is the things that have existed there that will now be. That's what we saw in Ecclesiastes 1 9. What has existed there that will now be in respect of what you are now saying? There are two realms in the heavens we have the eternal realm and the everlasting realm. Are we together, please? The everlasting realm simply means there is a beginning but no end. The eternal realm simply means there is no beginning and no end. Now, God dwells in the eternal realm, but the angels dwell where? In the everlasting realm because they had a beginning when they were created and then no end. Are we following? Now, in the eternal realm, what rules there is thoughts. What rules the everlasting realm is what? Words. Follow me. That's why the Bible says in Daniel, and the angel appeared to Daniel and said, From the first day you set your heart to pray, your prayer was heard, but I am come for your words. Huh? The way you are looking, is it too big? If you encourage, let me teach you more higher things. Are we following, please? But I am come for what? Your words. That's why the easiest way to enter into the realm of God is just to start to think about Him. You have entered. Is a thought realm away. That's how I prophesy. If I want to say, let me get to the prophetic now. This I just say, oh, sit down now. I want to and I've entered. <laughs> I will enter his gates with hands given in my heart. He didn't say God will push me to enter. That's why when people, I, 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 I was waiting for the choir to make me enter. Enter where? You enter. You do the what? Entering yourself. Are we blessed this morning? So your imaginative realm is powerful. What you think of is a language in the spiritual realm that has come to the heavens already. That's what controls the realms of God. Check every man in scripture God responded to. They never said anything. The devil said, the Bible said, and he said in his heart, I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. He didn't say, I want to replace God. He wanted to have a throne like that. To sit in the office of the Christ. Some other time. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God and be like the holy. Do you see that? He said where? In his heart. And God responded. He didn't say a thing. I'm making you understand that your thought is the powerful realm. That's what we call in Bible word, hope. It's the realm of imagination. Where you keep creating the picture of that thing you are looking towards in your mind. That's why we say hope. You are holding on. You are praying earnestly. Or expectantly rather. H-O-P. Do we understand that? Are we following? The Bible says at one time they came to Aaron. Aaron sat down. And they were hailing him. Behold, this is not the voice of a man. God. And Aaron said, Aaron said what? Nothing. But the Bible said because he didn't give glory to God, they struck him down. So how did he not do that? Do that in his heart? I'm making you understand that if you like, shout, Barata, oh God. Ah, if that one is not said, 
what you want to you are saying has already existed what should be has been <laughs> you are wasting time get that aspect right I don't think defeat I don't think failure I don't think this being disadvantaged at any point in time do you know why I come to meetings see let me teach you something if you're in the miraculous we call it we have what we call the um, the fortizo realm and we have what we call the yetzah yetzah realm can I show you something there's no time Daniel 2 give me Daniel 2 Asian words ever true changing me Daniel 2 11 Ish and ever true, changing me and changing. Give me twenty nine, twenty nine. We have come Listen Now Yetza is what we call the realm of concentrated thoughts What it simply means is that If I want to start a business My, my, my son is into music If I want to start a business now Maybe music Then I begin to think towards it To a point that thought overwhelms me Maybe music. I want to do music. Lord Jesus, how my studio if it can just set up and allow the thoughts to overwhelm me. I will enter to call the realm of what Yetza. Simply means what? Concentrated thoughts. Listen, are we together? Follow me. Let me teach you something. I want you to produce results the way I can. Now, what will happen is if I enter to that realm of Yetza, it will pick out atmospheres from me and send it into the supernatural world. Then what will happen is that suddenly, some of you now, what I will say, you find out you've been experiencing it. I will begin to meet people talking about that thing. So there's this about studio, you want to hear? I, say, ah, I didn't tell them. I didn't. My thought is now creating that cloud and attracting those things necessary for it to happen. But you see, it's just not a thought, it is concentrated thought. The same way, how do you get into re- um, depression? Concentrated worry. It's not just worry, you worry it to a point, it now breaks your heart. Then they say the person is depressed to a point of suicide. Yet that is the opposite <laughs> of worry. Worry in the right direction. Look at what the Bible says. All we heard was that King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Right? And in the dream he saw a golden calf. This was having a head of this, a legs of this, and this and this. Listen, don't miss this please. It will change your work with God and your Christian results. Are we together? The Bible says, and um, he said to them, I will not tell the people my dream. Go and what? Find out what I dreamt, then tell me the interpretation. Because if I tell you the dream, you might lie anything. And then they wanted to kill everyone. And then there was one that was a prophet who prayed all the time and had no secret hidden from him. Look at what he said to the king. He said, as for thee, O king, thy thought came into thy mind. Which person's thought? Your own. You were in your heart thinking that as a king now, my reign, what will happen with somebody around after me with this, and then, and what, and then? Said it now. Did you catch it? Ha! Ah. Pray the Holy Ghost. Ah. How many of you caught it? Let's go again. As for thee, O King, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed while you were lying down what should come to pass you were thinking about what should come to pass year after yet sir concentrated thoughts imagining it we saw there would this happen would this happen and that revealed that thing set a magnetic and spiritual field around you that begin to pull the answers that's how i get into the prophetic sometimes through yet sir Somebody shared a problem with me, then I go on my bed. I'm thinking, Lord, what might be the challenge? Huh? This thing, this thing. Lord, what might be? And then so I play into the imaginative realm. Then I come and say that. God said to me, <laughs> Lift up your hands and worship me. Do with it whatever you <laughs> whatever you have had. 
do it as you so please have we learned anything